morning everyone welcome to the morning devotion praying through the psalms my friends today we are praying the second part of psalm 37 verses from 21 through 40 we dealt in first part verses 1 to 20 about the godless people and what happens to them finally now in this section verses from 21 through 40 we will be discussing about the righteous people and what happens to them finally. The psalmist David gives a beautiful description of the righteous people. Let's take a look at it now. Verse 21. Righteous are generous people. They always lend to the needy. They try to help out those in need. Their steps are guided by the Lord. So the Lord guides them. They may stumble. They may face failures, but the Lord holds them. The children of the righteous are a blessing. They are a blessing to the family and to the society. They utter wisdom. They speak right things. They think right. They speak right. So what they speak is full of wisdom. And God's teaching is in their hearts, not on their lips, not in the books but in their hearts. Finally, God does not condemn them when tried. Other people may blame them. Other people may condemn them, but God will not condemn them. What a beautiful thing. So this is how David, the psalmist, tried to, tries to explain the righteous people and their lifestyle. Now, what would happen to the righteous people finally? Now, the psalmist, David, breaks the secret now. He tells in verse 22 and 34 that the righteous people will inherit the earth. The righteous people will inherit the land, he tells. My friends, here David might be referring to a piece of land because these people have been so good, so righteous that the Lord is blessing them with a piece of land. But deep down, intrinsically, basically, it is the kingdom of God. So the righteous people will enter God's kingdom. Isn't it beautiful, my friends? And now here, there is another thing we have to remember is that the salvation that they get, the righteous people get, is not their own. It's God's gift. God's gift to them. It is also mentioned in verse 39. Let us read it now. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. And so, salvation is a gift of God, my friends. And so, with all these thoughts, now let us pray Psalm 37, second part, 21 through 40. The wicked one borrows but does not repay. The righteous one is generous and gives. For those blessed by the Lord will inherit the earth. But those accursed will be cut off. The valiant one whose steps are guided by the Lord, who will delight in his way, may stumble, but he will never fall. For the Lord holds his hand. Neither in my youth nor now in old age have I seen the righteous one abandoned or his offspring begging for bread. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his offspring become a blessing. Turn from evil and do good, that you may be settled forever. For the Lord loves justice. 
and does not abandon the faithful. When the unjust are destroyed and the offspring of the wicked cut off, the righteous will inherit the earth and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom. His tongue speaks what is right. God's teaching is in his heart. His steps do not falter. The wicked spies on the righteous and seeks to kill him. But the Lord does not abandon him in his power, nor let him be condemned when tried. Wait eagerly for the Lord. and keep his way. He will raise you up to inherit the earth. You will see when the wicked are cut off. I have seen a ruthless scoundrel spreading out like a green cedar When I passed by again, he was gone. Though I searched, he could not be found. Observe the person of integrity and mark the upright, because there is a future for a man of peace. Sinners will be destroyed together The future of the wicked will be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. Their refuge in a time of distress. The Lord helps and rescues them. Rescues and saves them from the wicked. because they take refuge in him. Now let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of this life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of this fellowship time. We are able to come together, praise and thank and adore you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this great opportunity. Lord, as we read Psalm 37, may we know that you are watching everything. You are watching everyone. Lord, may we be aware of this reality and set our life properly. Lord, we have no strength on our own. Give us enough strength to set things right. Help our brothers and sisters who have gone away from you. Let them come back. Let them mend their ways. Let them change their ways and get their reward finally from you. Lord, help us to be generous today. Help us to be kind-hearted today. Help us to be your children today. We also pray for those people who suffer, who feel lonely, who are abandoned, the poor ones, the hungry ones. Send your helping hands to reach out to them in their need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 37 is a kind of instruction from King David to his children, children's children, next to generations and now to us. It's a kind of warning to all the people, especially the godless people, wicked ones, bad ones, evil people, to mend their ways, to change their ways, to come back in repentance 
has to be part of God's salvation. Otherwise, they will perish. Secondly, it's a kind of encouragement to the righteous people, the upright ones, to hold on to their values and principles. Finally, to get their reward, God's salvation. My friends, hope you liked Psalm 37. Thanks for watching our program. Keep watching our program on JCKU Creations, both on Facebook page and YouTube channel. You may also send your prayer concerns request to us, and we promise to pray for you. You may reach us at Jesus Christ King of Universe 777 at gmail.com. See you next with Psalm 38. Until then, stay blessed.